been an influx of videos over the recent years about mini PCs such as this one here. Now, I'm not gonna talk about this one specifically, but I wanna just give you a bit of a use case because I've had more and more questions on my videos about these little mini PCs and what you can actually do with them. So I thought I'd give you a bit of an overview from kind of the very simple to kind of a little bit more advanced stuff. Now, I wanna deliberately compare this little mini PC and another one I've just got off to the side here and kind of give you a bit of a comparison as to why you might pick one over the other initially. So this one here is an Ace Magician AM06 Pro. It comes with an eight core, 16 thread CPU and I think the TDP of this is 65 watts. Now, as much as this device is really powerful with its eight cores and 16 threads and 32 gig of RAM, unfortunately it falls short when it comes to storage. You can only add one M.2 drive and one SSD in kind of the roof of this device but where it makes up in my opinion compared to a lot of these other mini pcs is the thunderbolt port here well not allowed to say thunderbolt because it's an amd device but i'm sure it's a usb-c 40 gigabit port here then we have two ethernet ports on the back one being a one gig port kind of very standard traditional port and the other one is an intel i226v which makes it a two and a half gig port so ideal for kind of fast network file transfers then we also have a couple of usbs as well as hdmi and display port out and on the front we've got two more usbs and a type c usb and i think it's a 10 gig port but now let's switch over to this little mini pc here well and it kind of pushes the boundaries of what a mini pc is because it's significantly bigger and it's significantly heavier than this plastic thing here now the reason it's a bit bigger and heavier is because it is passively cooled and it has this massive fin stack on the top here so there's not going to be any noise coming out of this mini pc now internally is where the magic happens because this has expandability for four NVMe M.2 drives. Now they are only gonna get one lane each, which isn't the fastest thing in the world, but for my use case, this is absolutely plenty. Now on the back is also why I really, really wanted this little mini PC and why I'm using it every day. And it's got four of those Intel i226V ports. They're all two and a half gig ports. So you could have dedicated ports for each of your kind of VMs, which is again, something we're gonna get onto shortly. Now in terms of the rest of the connectivity, we've got a standard barrel jack, so no USB type C. And then we've also got a display port and a HDMI port on the back, as well as two USB ports. And flipping it around the front, we've got two more USBs. We've also got two Wi-Fi antenna slots if you want to use it with that, as well as the micro SD card slot, which can come in handy if you wanted to install an operating system on that micro SD card, because that's kind of one of the things you can do with this. Now the AMD mini PC that I showed you has an eight core 16 thread CPU. Whereas this little beast here with the four ethernet ports on the back has one of those 12th gen Alder Lake efficiency core CPUs only, but it's got eight of them. And it's specifically the i3N305. And I absolutely love this CPU because it's got a TDP of I think six or nine watts. So very, very low power draw compared to something like this. Now I will link both of them in the description down below. They will be affiliate links, so I will get a little kickback if you purchase through one of the links. Now, trying to find one of these might be a little bit tricky because it's really difficult to find this exact spec because there's just so many out there on AliExpress, but as well as the other one, I'll have this one linked in the description down below. But let's now actually get into the meat and potatoes of this video, and it's kind of the very first use case. Now, the very first use case of this is just use it as a normal PC. So just like you would go to the shop and buy one of those big tower PCs, you can equally use one of those, and doesn't matter which one it is, as a desktop PC. You install Windows on it, and you're off and running, basically. It's nice and quiet. A lot of the times, they're small enough to mount on the back of a monitor with the included base amount, and you have essentially a hidden PC with just a monitor. Now, another thing you can do with this is turn this into a retro gaming box and i'm specifically looking at the ace magician here because that has an amd gpu so you can quite easily place this behind a tv in your living room for example and play some old classics such as super mario or whatever Now having all that power in these little mini PCs can feel a little bit wasteful. 
And this is kind of where scenario number two comes in, why you could use one of these little mini PCs. And again, I'm gonna be looking at the Ace Magician one because that's kind of, for me, the primary use case for one of these because it has eight cores and 16 threads. And what you could technically set up is multiple VMs. And what that means is you could essentially run multiple operating systems side by side on this little mini PC and make use of that. So you could play around with some Windows Server stuff if you wanted to, if you're trying to learn Windows Server, for example, or have it even run as your domain controller or you could install something like Linux where you always wanted to dabble in Linux so you could install Ubuntu on this or Arch or any of the other amazing distros out there and especially NixOS and if you're interested in finding out more about NixOS I have a card popping up right here where you can find out more about NixOS because it's blown my mind. Now pieces of software that you'd use to kind of run these VMs is you could just run Hyper-V which is built into Windows or you could install something like Proxmox or even TrueNAS and I know some of you might be thinking hold on TrueNAS it's a NAS operating system System. And if I'm going a little bit too deep, don't worry, there will be follow-up videos on TrueNAS. But Proxmox and TrueNAS allow you to create VMs within the operating system, essentially, because that's the whole point of Proxmox, especially, is it allows you to create something called LXC containers, which we're going to get onto shortly, as well as VMs. So you could run multiple VMs simultaneously. Now, diving a little bit further into virtualization, you might have come across the term Docker. Now, Docker images are essentially a self-contained, very small, or generally very small operating system and what I mean by self-contained is that you don't have to install an operating system or anything like that it has all the bits that it needs already included in that docker image so what you could potentially run is something like AdGuard which is an ad blocker across your whole network at home and there are tons of videos on setting up AdGuard as well as Pi-hole. these are kind of the two most common ones out there so for example if you wanted to set this up in practice you could install Proxmox on one of those then you would go ahead and set up an LXC container. So it's just a lightweight and what's known as headless operating system. So you would only have the terminal and then you would install Docker inside of that. And the other super cool thing you could do with something like this is you could run Tailscale, which is my favorite VPN. And they are not sponsoring this video. I'm just a massive fan of Tailscale because what it allows me to do is it allows me to access my home network from anywhere in the world. And what's even more amazing is I can access my dad's or my mom's PC in another country as if they were sitting on my network at home through the magic of Tailscale. Now I appreciate a lot of this stuff is very much a high level overview and I am planning on making dedicated videos on setting up TrueNAS, on setting up Proxmox, on setting up Docker containers. I just wanted to kind of whet your appetite a little bit and give you an overview as to some of the things that you can do with these little mini PCs. But now I wanted to turn my attention to this beast here, which is my favorite device so far. And it's the one with the four ethernet ports, the one with no name. And I absolutely love this because I can run this as a NAS because it has access to those four NVMe drives as well as having a router run on it. And you might be thinking, hold on, what? But you can essentially use this as your own router instead of using the crappy ones that your ISPs generally give you. I run something called OpenSense on here and it has so many amazing features built in. It's so much more powerful. It allows you to essentially configure everything on your network. Now, obviously the pro is that you have full control. The con is you need to know what you're doing. But there are some excellent guides out there if you're looking to get started with OpenSense. Now, taking it a step further, you could simultaneously as your router and simultaneously as say running Docker images on here, you could also run something called Frigate. So it allows you to control and monitor your CCTV cameras and store them on here. So if you live in an area where you, for example, need CCTV cameras, you could most definitely set it up on here. You can populate this with up to, I think, eight terabyte drives. So if you have four of them, you have plenty of space to store all your data and all your CCTV footage on here. Now, and what's so amazing about this little micro SD card is that this is what can run, for example, Proxmox. And then inside, you use all four NVMe drives to store the data, to create VMs, to use it as a NAS and anything like that. Now, this is just very much scratching the surface of what you can do with this. There's a massive online community out there. And this is kind of the point of my channel is I want to create some of these guides for you so you can kind of follow along and do these things at the weekend because that's something that I tend to tinker with a lot over the weekend. I haven't got the time during the week, but at the weekends is when I tend to sit down and actually have a play with these. A couple of other things worth mentioning is, for example, you could run this as a media server. So you could have your own self-hosted Netflix, essentially. So you have all your movies on here. You run something called Plex or Jellyfin. And then on all the TVs around the house, you can essentially watch any of the movies that you have stored on the drive. 
drives on here, for example. And because this particular unit here has the Intel CPU with QuickSync, that enables you to not get any stutter, essentially, when you're watching movies. And you can have multiple people watching from this if you have enough power on here. You could even, with the magic of Tailscale, watch this when you are traveling. So if you'd like me to do a dedicated video on this, please leave that in the comments down below. And also, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe as well if you're enjoying this type of content. So I hope that's kind of given you enough of an insight as to some of the capabilities of these little mini PCs and why I'm a big fan of those. The possibilities are actually endless, but what I suggest you do is go and check out a couple of Docker videos, check out a couple of Proxmox videos and see if that's something that you feel comfortable doing. Because otherwise there's nothing wrong with just installing Docker on Windows and installing Hyper-V on Windows and just using it there without having to go through the whole hassle of learning Linux as well. But the whole purpose of this video was to answer those questions that you have guys have been leaving me in the comments and kind of just give you a bit of a general overview as to what I do and how I run things. So let me know in the comments if there's anything that's wet your appetite and you want me to do another video on and kind of go a little bit more in depth. More than happy to do that. But all that's left for me to say is thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.